Wizards and Warriors is a platforming video game developed by Rare for the Nintendo Entertainment System It was published by Acclaim and released in North America in December 1987, and in Europe on January 7, 1990. It was also released in Japan by Jaleco on July 15, 1988, under the title Densetsu no Kishi Elrond, Yun Shuo no Chi Shi Ururando Legendary Knight Elrond. In the game, the player controls Kuros, knight warrior of the Books of Excalibur, as he sets out in the Kingdom of Elrond to defeat the evil wizard Malkal. Malkal holds the Princess of Elrond captive in Castle Ironspire, deep within the forests of Elrond. The player fights through forests, tunnels, and caves, while also collecting keys, treasure, weapons, and magic items. Wizards and Warriors was the second game Rare released for the NES, after the skiing simulator Slalom 1987. In the months surrounding its North American and European releases, Wizards and Warriors was featured in a number of video game magazines, including Nintendo Fun Club News, Nintendo Power, and Video Games and Computer Entertainment. The game was praised for its graphics, sound, difficulty, and arcade-style gameplay. In 2010, Retro Gamer called Wizards and Warriors a unique experience for NES gamers in 1987 that was technically well ahead of other games for the console at the time, but attributed the game's relatively low difficulty to allowing unlimited continues without penalty. Wizards and Warriors was followed by three sequels, Iron Sword, Wizards and Warriors 2 1989, Wizards and Warriors 3, Kuros, Visions of Power 1992, and Wizards and Warriors X, The Fortress of Fear 1990. Topic Gameplay Wizards and Warriors is a platformer in which players control Kuros as he makes his way through the forests of Elrond to Castle Ironspire, where he must defeat Malkal and rescue the princess. After starting the game, the map is briefly shown for players to look at, afterwards, gameplay starts. Starting in the Elrond Forest, players must explore the trees, both on top and inside, to find items and to make it into the caves and tunnels. There, players start collecting the various magical items and treasure, they must make their way through caves filled with ice as well as lava. Afterwards, players fight through a second set of forests before arriving at Castle Ironspire, in which the player must go over the castle in order to enter it. The castle consists of a series of mazes in which players must use keys to open doors and possibly find other damsels who can be rescued. At the end lies the final confrontation with the wizard Malkal. Players use the control pad to move horizontally and to crouch. Kuros can attack enemies by using his brightsword or with other weapons and magic. He can also attack enemies while in the air or while standing by simply holding the sword in position. The objective of the game is to collect the various weapons and magic as well as the gems and treasure along the way. Players use these items to make it past the enemies and other obstacles and hazards. Players collect gems in order to bribe the creature who guards the entrance to the next level. If players do not have enough gems, they cannot progress to the next level. At the end of each level is a boss creature that has been empowered by Malkal's black magic. Bosses have an enemy's black magic power meter that shows how difficult the boss is, how many hits are required to defeat it, and what type of weaponry needs to be used. Kuros has a life meter that decreases as time passes and when he sustains damage from enemies. Players loses a life when Kuros' life meter runs out, but upon restarting they keep all the items they have obtained up to that point. The game ends when all three lives have been lost, but players have the choice to continue and restart at the level in which they lost their last life. Upon continuing, players keep all their items obtained up to that point, but their score goes back to zero. Along the way, players can replenish Kuros' life meter by collecting pieces of meat scattered throughout the levels. Along the way, players pick up many items that will help Kuros along his way. Acorns, torches, and treasure chests contain objects for players to collect. Chests are color coded and require a key of that matching color to open the chest. The same color coded keys are used to open doors of matching colors. Some weapons and magic items are replaced once the player collects a new item, but others remain throughout the course of the game. Items include the following Boots of Force that can kick open chests and doors, magical potions that temporarily grant Kuros invulnerability, extra speed, or extra jumping ability, gems to help bribe the end of level guardian, a shield to protect from enemy attacks, the ''Potion of Levitation'' that allows Kuros to float upwards, the ''Dagger of Throwing'' and the ''Battle Axe of Agar'' that are thrown at enemies and return like a boomerang, the ''Feather of Feather Fall'' 
that slows Kuros' falling speed, the wand of wonder, and staff of power, that shoot out balls of ice and fire, respectively, the cloak of darkness, that makes Kuros invisible to enemies, the boots of lava walk, that allows Kuros to walk on the lava, exploding eggs, that destroys all onscreen enemies, alarm clocks, that stop all enemies for a brief period, knife and axe upgrades and an item simply called a horn trumpet that had many players confused as it appeared to be useless, its purpose was to reveal hidden doors to gem caves in some places. Other valuable treasures increase the player's score and include coins, orbs, chalices, and entire hordes of treasure. Rescuing the damsels in the levels also increase the player's score. Topic plot Wizards and Warriors pits the story's hero Kuros, the Knight Warrior of the Books of Excalibur, against the main antagonist, the evil wizard Malkal. He was considered one of the greatest wizards in the land, such that Merlin was one of his students. However, the aging Malkal has gone mad and has started using his magic for evil. As a result, Malkal has captured the princess and holds her prisoner in Castle Ironspire, deep within the forests of Elrond. The game's protagonist, the brave knight Kuros, is summoned to venture through the forests of Elrond. He is armed with the legendary Brightsword, a sword that is powerful enough to beat demons, insects, undead, and the other creatures that have fallen under Malkal's spell. With the sword, he ventures out through the forests of Elrond and the various caves and underground tunnels into Castle Ironspire, where he must defeat Malkal and rescue the princess. Topic development and reception Wizards and Warriors was developed by UK-based video game company Rare for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It was released by Acclaim in North America in December 1987, it would later be released by the same company in Europe on January 7, 1990. It was released in Japan by Jaleco under the title Densetsu no Kishi Elrond on July 15, 1988. The game would be Rare's second NES release, after Slalom. The game's soundtrack was composed by video game composer David Wise. Wizards and Warriors was reviewed in Nintendo Fun Club News, the precursor to Nintendo Power, in which a brief overview of the gameplay was given. The game would be featured again in Nintendo Power's November to December 1989 issue, where it was chosen as the best game to use with the NES Advantage controller, saying that the joystick would allow players to concentrate on other strategic gameplay elements. In 1989, Wizards and Warriors was nominated by the magazine for Best Graphics and Sound and Best Character Kuros for its Nintendo Power Awards 88, but it did not win in either category. It also received coverage in a 1989 issue of Video Games and Computer Entertainment. The reviewer lauded the game's challenge and need for problem solving, more particular the need to use different items aside from the brightsword in order to defeat some enemies and progress in the game, and the need to find hidden rooms where required items are located. However, he noted that the high level of difficulty is offset by the ability to continue at exactly the same spot in which the player left off. Overall, the reviewer praised Wizards and Warriors for its excellent graphics and sound, arcade-style gameplay, and overall challenge. German magazine Power Play praised the game's good graphics, sound and extras, but criticized its stale gameplay. In a retrospective of the entire Wizards and Warriors series, UK-based magazine Retro Gamer gave a positive review of the first title, saying that Kuros's first adventure was a unique experience for NES gamers in 1987 and technically well ahead of other games for the console at the time. The review said that the game, while a platformer, placed much emphasis on finding treasure and items. The review said that most gamers found fault in relatively easy difficulty level, most symbolized by its unlimited continues in which players can continue at the point right where they left off. According to the retrospective, in 1988, Rare showed Wizards and Warriors to Zippo Games, who was touring Rare and their NES library. Rare asked them to develop a sequel to the game, which would become Iron Sword, Wizards and Warriors 2. In another retrospective of Rare as part of the company's 25th anniversary, GamePro looked back on the game, calling it unique at the time due to the unlimited amount of continues players received. Wizards and Warriors has received scant coverage from modern video gaming websites. 
Video gaming website GamesRadar named the opening theme for the game as Game Music of the Day, noting that the theme suggests, from the moment you turn on the game, that knights, wizards, goblins, and who knows what else are about to collide in a battle so epic it's destined for a Frazetta painting. J.C. Fletcher from Joystick called the game a simple action platformer about a guy in thick armor who kicks open treasure chests in order to bribe knights. He also notes the variety of good and bad items such as the staff of power which inflicts much damage to enemies and conversely the cloak of darkness which he says makes Kuros invisible to you but not to enemies. He said that the game has an arcade feel with unlimited continues, a high score list, name entry for high scores and good music. Houston Press's Jeff Rauner lauded the game's music and animation and noted its high difficulty level especially during boss battles. IGN listed Wizards and Warriors at number 56 on its top 100 NES games list. Reviewer Sam Claiborne said that the game was inspired by Dungeons and Dragons type RPGs, but it went further in incorporating action platforming elements along with more traditional RPG elements. Columnist and comedy writer Scenebaby criticized the game for items that did not work as intended, including the Cloak of Darkness and the Boots of Lava Walk. Other media Wizards and Warriors was published as a standalone handheld game by Acclaim in September 1989, as part of a series of handheld ports by the company which also included WWF WrestleMania Challenge, Knight Rider, 1943, The Battle of Midway, and Rocky. Kuros and his nemesis Malkal were featured, along with the title characters from Quirk and Bigfoot, Tyrone from Arch Rivals, and characters from Narc, in the 1990 animated series The Power Team, part of the video game reviewing show Video Power. Malkal appeared in an episode of Captain N, the game master called Nightmare on Mother Brains Street where the world of the game was referred to as Excalibur and not Elrond. Wizards and Warriors was one of the eight games that were novelized for the Worlds of Power series of NES game adaptations, published by Scholastic Corporation. The novelization was written by the series creator Seth Godin, under the pseudonym F. X. 9. The book was the only one in the series in which no effort was made to edit out the protagonist's weapons on the cover. However, on the cover, Kuros' loincloth was airbrushed on both sides in order to more completely conceal his underside, which is more visible on the cover of the game itself. The novelization is about a boy named Matthew who is having trouble using his imagination for a creative writing class, when he accidentally brings his father's knight figurine to life. He is then spirited away to the land of Elrond to help Kuros defeat Malkal. As with the other books in the series in which nobody actually died, all of the creatures that they killed were made from the lives of the people of Elrond, and whenever a creature was slain, a person was returned to their normal state. Further in the novel, the two save Kuro's sister in the Pink Caves. While Matthew was invulnerable at the start of the mission, as the two drew closer to the evil wizard, he becomes more vulnerable to the attacks of Malkal's villains. <laughs>